Right. All trailers start off. Right. Boom. <laughs> Derek, thanks so much for joining me on the show today. It's really awesome to have you here. Yeah, and, thanks for having um, me. When people think about trailers, mm -hmm. obviously first they sort of think movie trailers, yeah. but in fact, game trailers, they're as big and as influential to the popularity of the games and the cultures that surround them. How did you kind of get involved in this in the first place? So I started in movie trailers as an assistant out of college first, and then I play a lot of video games, and there's certain games that I just, I like them so much that if I look at the trailer, I'm like, man, I just want to make my own because maybe the trailer I don't like as much or maybe it was like really long. I'm like, I want to make my own one just to enjoy because it's just fun to just watch a trailer for a video game. Right. And so it just started as a hobby basically. And then uh, I just, I knew some friends who worked in independent video games. And from there I got my first gigs and I started posting on forums and stuff trying to say, hey, right. I do this, you need trailer for this and like you know first the project's very small right. and kind of the last few years um, it's gotten bigger and bigger and I've gotten my name out some more right. so I'm getting a lot more cool projects right. to work on. So now how does this differ from sort of you know an actual movie trailer because obviously your dialogue is far limited well I guess maybe not far limited but it's obviously more limited than the average script for a film so you have actually it can be the exact opposite right. because a lot of games are 10 hours to beat, 20 right. hours to beat, 50 hours to beat. Right. So it's actually more like editing for a series in those cases. Right. But also some games don't have dialogue also. Right. But the biggest difference is that with movies, what you get from the production company, whatever, is all you're gonna get. Right. Whereas with games, you're basically also not just the editor, you're the director, camera person, actor in some ways. Mm -hmm. So like if, cause the way that you move the camera in the game can be perceived as the character in the game, right? You know, so like if you look very suddenly versus like slowly, right. then that can key into the audience, like the the feeling of the character. Because the perspective, depending upon the game, will mm -hmm. change based on the actual gameplay. And as you said, you're capturing from the actual gameplay itself, yeah. And you're telling a story, yeah. And you have to tell that story very concisely. It's got to be in and out. You have to, you know, obviously it's it's a combination of sound effects, of dialogue, of sound design, of music, yeah. all in an effort to really excite. Do you, do you give it all away? I mean, for games, it's kind of, in a way, it's harder to do that, especially if it's not a very story-heavy game, mm -hmm. because games, it's a lot about the player interacting with the game. Right. So how you play the game versus how I play the game right. could be entirely different. Mm -hmm. So for the trailer, you're trying to create sort of an idealized version of how it could be played, but someone who picks it up later on, they might not play it that way at all. But also, right. you have to worry about making the shots clear for the audience so they can interpret what the game is, how the game is played, because you're not just telling the story, you're also trying to inform them about is this gonna be fun or not. If you only put gameplay with no kind of beginning, middle, and end sort of feeling to it, right. it just kind of like a drone. Right, it, and it's it, it doesn't capture, it doesn't grab and you. It gets boring after a while because right. it's not framed in a certain way that has like a climax where you're like, oh my God, then like the gameplay gets more complicated here. Then, oh, and then you can jump and shoot fireballs and whatever, <laughs> right. you know? A lot of that coming out of, again, sort of cinematic trailers, there's a lot of very commonly, commonly used techniques, commonly used sound effects. Sure. How big of a role does music actually play in the trailer, much like in a film trailer? So here's the dirty secret I'd say for trailers, is that music does most of the work. A lot of people will see a trailer, I think, and they'll think, oh my God, this trailer is so amazing. Right. It's so amazing. How can you compete with a song that you like grew up listening to, right. you've listened to for like 10 years or whatever right. like that? It resonates, right. My job is so much easier if the music is really good just because it's just a lot of fun editing right. with good music. It's fun to cut against and yeah. 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 So now you've actually brought mm -hmm. a couple of things to show us. In fact, you brought your first creation, your first trailer that you I, made. I do. You it's actually from, dug it out of the from archives. 17 years ago. Okay. I had to convert it from a QuickTime that was about this big. Right. It wouldn't even preview in Mac OS because it's an old codec. Right, right, which so isn't supported it. anymore. Awesome. Yeah. So this is when the film The Final Fantasy of Spirits Within was coming out. On their website, they're releasing really short clips from the movie, like literally two or three seconds. I was just getting so excited about it. I should, I should have a trailer for this. So, so I took a song from one of the Final Fantasy games I liked, and I just this is what came out. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I mean, 2000. Look at my early days of the web. No YouTube. There's no YouTube. Right. You're not sharing so this. So I just showed it to my friends in my dorm. Right. And they're thinking, amazing, right? I mean, oh, probably, hopefully, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> even even watching this now, mm -hmm. it doesn't even feel outdated. It feels like this could be. Yeah, it really that, does. That, that that scares me a little bit. Don't get me wrong. Right, right. I would not do this this no, way again. Do it that way. Again, but right. I'm looking at how I matched it to the music. And I'm like, yeah, I still do exactly that same sort right. of thing. Cutting to that music and cutting to the glissandos and the harp and everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it does. It, it it engages you. Whether you're a fan of Final Fantasy or not. Yeah. In trailers, like, everything has a sound effect. Like, right. a traffic light turning to red or... Uh, a person blinking their eyes or turning their head, and that's ridiculous in any other form of storytelling. Format, right. But in a trailer, you know, it's like, oh yeah, that's just how this reality works. Right. All right, yeah. so now are we gonna take a look at one that has some intense sound design here? So one of the recent movie trailer trends is using a lot of sound design almost as the score for the trailer. Right. Yeah. This is for Quadrilateral Cowboy, which is billed as a 20th century cyberpunk. Okay. And so this one I did a collaboration with um, some friends of mine. It's a far cry from the days of file cabinets and phone books. Computers make our lives more convenient, but experts warn that convenience comes at a steep price. So, the next time you log on, consider just what information you're sending and who might be listening because these high-tech hackers are playing high-stakes games and their only loyalty is to the highest bidder. From the vaults at Bergamot Towers to the vaulted halls of government to your bank's local branch, one thing is clear. Nowhere is beyond their reach. You started doing this really, you know, uh, as a fan in 2000. This, as you said, is from last yeah. year. At what point, because there was a point where you realized, like, this this could actually be your, your full-time job, yeah. right? I mean, this could be something that you could continue to work with. And it was Firewatch that really kind of made the future of your working in these kind of trailers yeah, possible. Yeah, Firewatch was, uh, it was a very anticipated project because the, the co-founders of that company were the creative directors and writers of the first season of The Walking Dead game. Right. And also their art director for that game was uh, Ali Moss, who is famous for making a lot of amazing book covers and movie posters. Let's take a look at one of your Firewatch trailers. Okay. What's in this cave down here? NFS tells people not to go too far in there. It's pretty dangerous. You're in it, aren't you? It doesn't seem that dangerous. Whoa, whoa. Ah, no! Henry! Seriously, it's completely fine in here. <sighs> Damn it. That storm knocked out the phone line I used to talk to the service, which means we are cut off. I'll see what I can do. I don't talk to the other lookouts as much as I talk to you. Not in the same way. What makes me so special? Two young women have been reported missing. You're probably the last person to have seen them. Hey, you kids! Uh, somebody cut the comms. What? I'm out here and the wire is cut clean through. Wait, you're already there? You're not in your tower? No, I'm not. Then who is? So now, I want to also ask you about sort of the, the cliches in making trailer. Okay, so number one, or in no particular order, first cliche right. is boom. Right. All trailers start off right. boom. Right. Here's another little secret of trailer editing, is that we like having title cards, even though right. they don't, they're not always good, like right. the text on a title card. Right. Like a lot of people don't remember them at all, but right. it makes it easier to transition between scenes. Right. So, so like from the cold open going to like logos, and then also the other thing is whenever you're watching trailers, after a bit of dialogue happens, just look for just look for a sound effect or a series of shots because right. always do that. We always break up dialogue with sound effects or something. So it's like you know guns, lots of guns. Right. Right, right, sound right, effect, right, like right. the thing that I was told when I was an assistant, it's like, all right, Derek, everything has to butt up against each other. There can't be any space no gaps. in between right, right. unless the space is the thing that you're putting in there, right. you know? But if there's empty space there, it's like, oh, they could have shaved a little bit there, then take it off. Um, okay, so we've got, yes, cold open, we've got uh, uh, yeah, title cards. Punctu I'd say punctuation between dialogue. Yeah. And so the other thing is, um, yeah, here the, that cut to black, the cuts of black is also the other transition thing because right. it's both to make the moment more dramatic, mm -hmm. it's also to make the music editing easier. Right, okay. So yeah, it's yeah. like, okay, he's like, boom, all right, 
bring in the new music, bring in like the, the hip hop song that right. is really popular right now. Right. What is the production time for something like a game trailer? Because oh. it totally varies. Mm -hmm. um, for like a big budget sort of thing, it could be several weeks, mm -hmm. it could be two weeks. Um, a lot of these projects I worked on, I turned over in a week or less. Okay. That Quadrilateral Cowboy one, I did in five days. All right. And presumably, like, the release dates and sort of the, the social buzz that goes around this, I mean, everything's on a, on, on a time, there's a time frame for everything. Yeah, it's the, all there's definitely, targeted like, a, like and, a schedule. Right. Like, okay, we have to release during this show because this right. is when everyone's looking at right. uh, this thing, or maybe we want to, like, space out the trailers so then that people are excited enough, but they don't get sick of our trailers. It's right. very, it's, there's no perfect formula, right. but um, it's... It's definitely a balance. Just as an editor, I mean, it's a great way just to get like your chops down, mm -hmm. timing. Well, and I love that you added to that, and as the editor, you're actually given, which I think is inspirational to people watching, an enormous amount of leeway and control. Mm -hmm. Like, it's really up to you to create the motion, the movement, the yeah. story, the, the reveal, you know, whatever it is. When, when you have the game, it's also, by the way, you can move the camera anywhere. Right. And especially if you can, right. They give you tools like debug tools right. where you have camera controls that you actually don't have when you're playing the game. Right. So it's like, oh, it was like, oh, Derek, do you want to change like the depth of field? Do you want to do whatever? It's like, right. we could do all that. Just we'll just add it in the code. Right. And right. I'm like, really? Oh crap. Right. It's, it's too much. Too much creative space. <laughs> too much creative sometimes. space. Sometimes give me some constraints. Sometimes you almost want. Do you think you have like one particular Derek Lou signature that you try and put into trailers that you make? I always really try to Mickey Mouse the, the visuals. Right. And I try to have motion flow between shots. Right. So for example, in this trailer, there's like a few shots of downward motion. Right. And there's right. one of upward motion, but these are all like different shots. They're different shots. And, and I'm continue. And you feel that actually. I mean, as I, I felt myself leaning in based right. on the motion that I was Good. watching, that probably wasn't related to the actual scene. You yeah. were cutting it from somewhere so else. So it's hopefully a combination of visuals and the music. Success. Dude. <laughs> well, thank you so much for you really for showcasing me. all this incredible work. And that is truly what the Make It Show is all about. Having incredible creatives talking about their amazing stories, showcasing their work in industries that you probably didn't even realize, I mean, they're thriving. They're thriving. Mm -hmm. They're getting bigger and bigger every day. Yeah, and I we, mean, need, we need more and more people creating If you stuff. asked me several years ago, I wouldn't have known that this is a job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. All right, my friends. Well, again, stay tuned for the next episode of Make It. We're here every week on the Creative Cloud YouTube channel. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you again next time.